Hello beautiful people, it is Jada Jo. I am so excited for today's video. Let me explain to you what I'm about to read to you. When I was in eighth grade, the eighth grade teachers decided to elect one male and one female to be eighth graders of the year. And the two eighth graders of the year got to give a five minute speech at the end of the year assembly, the little eighth grade graduation assembly. And I was chosen as the female eighth grader of the year. I immediately knew when I got elected that I I wanted to talk about my eating disorder story in my speech because my eighth grade year was the year that I started recovery from my eating disorder and I was like this is such a beautiful opportunity to share my story and to hopefully empower other people. However, my parents were a little bit hesitant about me sharing details about my eating disorder. They thought that maybe it would be a good idea to wait a little bit longer into my recovery before I told other people about my struggles, but I was so determined to use my story to empower other people that I would not give it up and we decided that we were gonna go to my therapist to see if she thought that it was a good idea and she was on my side. She thought that that would be a really powerful thing for me to do and so I won that argument and I got to talk about my eating disorder in my speech and it was Honestly, still to this day, maybe one of the most empowering experiences of my life. I think back to that day very, very frequently because the feeling that I felt after giving that speech is something that I want to feel again and is something that I want to continue to chase because I want to continue to be a part of projects and communities that make me feel empowered in the way that giving that speech made me feel. I thought that I was never going to be able to read that speech ever again because I could not find it. I looked on all of my home computers, I looked on my personal computer, I looked everywhere to try to find this speech because I knew that I typed it up but I did not know where I put it after years and years and years of thinking that I was never going to be able to read it again I was going through this box that had my name on it the last time that I was home and I found my eighth grade speech when I tell you that my heart just lit up in that moment I was so so excited that I found this speech and that I could read it again but I didn't read it immediately I just kept it with me and I wanted to wait until the perfect moment this week I am quarantining I got COVID. It's been a very, very difficult week for me. It's been a very, very difficult past month for me. This feels like the worst possible time to be quarantined by myself because my thoughts are going crazy and attacking me 24 seven. But last night after I had a little um, breakdown, we'll call it little because, mm, yeah, it was so little, so small, only lasted just a little bit of time. After that little breakdown, you knew that I needed a little pick-me-up and I remembered that I had this speech. And so I read it last night and I started crying. Oh, good cry though. You know those cries that come from deep down in your soul and they just actually feel really good? That's how that cry felt. And then I literally sat there with my paper and talked to my eighth grade self and told her how proud I was of her and told her about my new life. And it was just very, very, very healing. And then I had the idea that maybe I could share the speech on YouTube because even though it's very much written by an eighth grader, I still think that there's things to take away from this speech. And I still feel so proud of this speech. So imagine me in eighth grade. I actually had like the same haircut. I had a little short bob. I was in a black jumpsuit and I was wearing red Converse. Everyone in my grade plus my mom, my dad, and my sister. <clears throat> Here we go. We all know the feeling of a new school year. Maybe a different campus, different schedule, different teachers, different friends, different expectations. Everything is just different. That word, different, sometimes carries a negative connotation, whether it describes a part of school or it's used to describe a person. But today I want to shift your mindset into believing different doesn't always have to be a bad thing. On the contrary, it can be an excellent thing. Throughout the years at Mountainside, the middle school that I went to, I have become a different person. I want to reflect on and share those life-changing experiences in hopes of motivating you with my story, as well as my hopes for the future. For me, 6th and 7th grade was a lot of trying to fit in and be like everyone else. You know how it goes, you see all your friends wearing those cool new shoes and you go home and you ask your mom if you can get them. When she says no, you say, but mom, everyone has them, trying to convince her you need them. Even though 
they really aren't that cool. What's cool to you is the idea of being like everyone else. It's okay to like the same clothes as your friends, but here's when it gets tricky. When you get so wrapped up in what society says you should be that you lose yourself along the way. Images are powerful, but images are also superficial. Society today promotes its idea of perfect on almost every magazine cover and every television commercial. It can be very intimidating and discouraging for our self-esteem. Unfortunately for me, getting right down to it, I let that superficiality override my common sense when I was in seventh grade, and I developed an unhealthy relationship with food, otherwise known as an eating disorder. I thought the only way to be accepted was to look like the girls who I saw on the magazine covers, so I took it upon myself to do all that I could to look like them. It started as a girl just trying to be healthy, but eventually it spiraled out of control, and I restricted myself from all the foods I once enjoyed eating. I also basically restricted myself from being happy. After rapidly losing a crazy amount of weight, weight which I didn't have to lose in the first place, I became very skinny, very fragile. I had no muscle, no fat. This meant nothing to protect my still growing bones from injury. This also meant I had no energy to keep me going throughout the days. Because in case you didn't know, fat stores equal energy. So yes, I looked like the girls in the magazines, but at the same time I was depressed. I was lonely, I was insecure, I was tired, I was starving. It wasn't until I took a step back and reflected on my behavior that I realized just how wrapped up I had become in the idea of being perfect. So today, for me, being fearless means being honest, and the truth is, I struggled. Why am I telling you this? I want to show you how I have grown and evolved from that struggle, because chances are you struggle too. Maybe not the same way that I did, but how you struggled is not what's important. What's important is that you learn to get up after being knocked down. Luckily, I was able to do that this year. I turned my 8th grade year into an opportunity to truly find myself, because that struggle, that disorder I developed, does not define me, and I wanted to find out what does. Before this year, as I already talked about, I was obsessed with society's definition of the ideal person. But I realized that we are society, you and me. I have a say in society, so I decided to change my outlook as a member of the society and developed my own expectations for myself instead of following the expectations of others. The first step was learning to love myself because if you don't love yourself, you're less likely to respect yourself, which can lead down negative paths as shown through my experiences. I learned to love who I am even if that meant accepting the fact that I'm different and will always be different. But different is beautiful. God has created each and every one of us with a purpose, and if we all had the same purpose in life, we would never get anywhere. Once you learn to love and accept yourself, it's so much easier to give love and acceptance to other people. Many people choose their friends based on materialistic things, and they never experience true friendship. When two people take the time to get to know each other's hearts, that's when friendship is formed. These types of friendships are the ones that will last. It was hard for me to cope with my disorder because I tended to push everyone away and isolate myself. Throughout my recovery, I didn't have close relationships with people, so I didn't have friends to talk to about my problems and my struggles. Throughout high school, I hoped to improve my quality of life by restoring those close relationships, which I unfortunately lost because of my decisions. I hope to find a solid group of friends who will have my back no matter what. At the moment, it may seem as though having a ton of friends is the way to go, and don't get me wrong, having a lot of friends can be awesome, but just be sure that they're real friends, because when it comes down to it, would you rather have a close group of best friends who know you very well, or a million friends who don't really know you at all? My goal is to find a close group of best friends who know me very well. What better time to make new friends than in high school, right? It's supposed to be the best years of our lives. But without friends to create memories and have fun times with, the best years of our lives can turn into the loneliest. Which brings me back to the struggle that I went through. I'm going to finish my speech by proposing a goal. Like I said, we are society. You have a say, and I have a say. Together we can change society and redefine what is perfect, or even the need for perfection at all. I hope together, as a school, as a community, we can change societal norms by promoting the acceptance of our differences. If there's anything I would want you to take away from my story, or if there's one thing I have learned throughout my recovery, it is that being like everyone else waters down the world, but being different, standing out, can change the world. 
I want you to each understand that there is so much more to life than those Tory Burch sandals or the Michael Jordan high tops. So much more than how you looked at that picture that your friend just posted. So much more to life than how skinny you are, how rich you are, how popular you are, how perfect you are. What matters is your heart. If you have a loving, caring heart that is deeply rooted in God's love for you, no storm will ever be able to shake you. Because in the Lord, you are strong, you are courageous, you are important, you can do great things, and you are beautiful because you are different. <laughs> How cute is that? The reason that I got super emotional reading this the first time, I literally went like this after reading it because I just want to hug my 8th grade self so much. I get a little emotional thinking about her goals for high school just because they were not met, if I'm being honest. I did not find a close group of friends to be able to make high school the best years of my life. It did turn into the loneliest years of my life, so that section gets a little emotional for me because I imagine telling her these things and her being very, very sad, but at the same time, I'm so proud of my journey and I'm so proud of where I am right now. And thinking back to that girl, she still is me. That voice that I, for the first time, used to tell my story, I'm still using to this day. I'm still sharing my story on different platforms and in real life to hopefully inspire other people and motivate other people and uplift other people but at the same time thinking back to my eighth grade self feels like a completely different version of myself I would have the best time if I were to have a sleepover with that eighth grade girl but at the same time we're not the same person I have learned so much and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be the eighth grader of the year I know that, that might sound so silly my brother had my contact in his phone as Eggity for a really long time, eighth grader of the year, to make fun of that idea. But it truly meant so much to me and I truly feel as though it was a pivotal moment in my life. I am proud of myself and I wanted to share that speech because isn't it so sweet? Isn't that so sweet? Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt